most high Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. in Christ. 
Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epiphany means literally, literally, revelation, manifestation. Now, God, with the birth of Jesus, has manifested himself as light to the nations. And so we hear from, uh, during Christmas Day, we hear the prophet Isaiah. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. That's Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. And Isaiah's prophecy in the first reading is fulfilled. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. 
then you shall be radiant at what you see, your heart shall throb and overflow. There's a joy because the light of God has manifested itself to the nations and to the people. And one of the peoples who first saw and received and, uh, and contemplate on that light beside the shepherds were the wise men uh, who are central in the story of the Epiphany and whose feast we celebrate today. And they are our inspiration when we open ourselves to that light and, and we are called to imitate them. Now my dear friends, it has been a tradition to call the Feast of the Epiphany the Feast of the Three Kings. However, the title is not accurate because if you listen to the Gospel very carefully, uh, you would know that there was no mention at all about kings or three kings. Instead, the Gospel referred to them as wise men. No, there were astrologers, uh, men who study and interpret the confluence of the stars. So in a manner of speaking, they were men who searched for the stars. Another thing that we should take note is the number of the men. No, how sure are we, are we that there were three? Now, the Gospel of Matthew, which we just read, uh, did not mention that there were three wise men. What it said is that the wise men offered gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That is all. So that these gifts do not necessarily mean uh, three givers. There could be uh, some theologians would say 10 out of 100 givers who agreed that they would only give gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But my dear friends do not get in the details here. The feast today is not the feast of the number of the wise men. We need not argue uh, where they came from, or we need not even argue, argue what their gifts were. The lesson for today is simply this. We must imitate the wise man. How do we imitate them? Let me point out three things. The first, is that the wise men were wise because they ask. People who do not know, who do not ask, cannot discover wisdom. People who say, I know everything already, there is nothing much that I can learn, are people who don't know actually what they're talking about. The first step to real wisdom is the acknowledgement of our ignorance, that our knowledge is limited and there's so much more to learn. The wise men say, say to themselves, I still have so much to learn. The wise men say to themselves, I still have much to learn from my experiences, from people, from events in my life. And that's why Sunday after Sunday we come uh, to celebrate the Eucharist, read from the scriptures, listen to the Word of God, reflect on how they relate to our personal lives and events in our lives. Why? The reason is that we are continually challenged to, to ask those questions that matter to us in our faith and to shed light on our experiences 
based on the Word of God. We are open, opening ourselves to this cons uh, con continuous uh, learning, discovery, uh, things in our lives and how God deals with us in the unique circumstances of our life. We continue to open ourselves to important questions and, and recognize that there are still answers that we need to learn. The second lesson is that the wise men search they went out to find out for themselves, to discover. They did not just sit and cross their arms. They searched. They journeyed. They walked. They asked. They sought. Wisdom cannot be found simply by sitting down. Wisdom or intelligence or knowledge is not granted to the lazy. Now God wish, God's wisdom is given to people who search, who are open themselves to learning. It is given to people who are willing to tire themselves out precisely to find true wisdom, to find God in their lives and the events that they, they experience. So first, we must ask. Second, we must search. And third, the third lesson is, we, we, is contained in the last sentence of the Gospel today. They went back to their own country by another way. Now, people who have been touched by the wisdom of God must change. People who have been touched by the wisdom of God must take the other way, the way of God. People who have been touched by the grace of God must take on another route, the route of God. Now, my dear friends, isn't that the story of the many people we, we hear in the scriptures. Mary was touched by the message of an angel. And with total generosity and acceptance of the great task ahead of her, she transformed her life, her whole life. The apostles on the sea, sea of Galilee, encountered Jesus and left everything behind. And they radically followed the teacher. They changed their life, and so on and so forth. Joseph, who, who dreamed about the message of an angel, life happened to, to him as he encountered God through the angel, and that just radically transformed his life. And like us, an encounter with the Lord should not make us remain the same. An encounter, a true encounter with the Lord should transform us, should make us better people, better Christians. An encounter with the Lord should make us decide to leave sin behind and be converted for the better. That's how our encounter with the Lord does to us. We try to go, uh, go another way to take another route in our lives. So today, in, on this Feast of the Lord's Epiphany, we are invited to be wise, to open ourselves to the light, 
and the invitation to, the, to be wise and to open it to the light of God is an invitation to discover God. Are we willing to ask and open for us ourselves to other possibilities of learning? Are we willing to waste time and money and energy and self in search of the truth? Are we willing to change, to be converted because we have encountered God in our lives? Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The light of Christ draws us here today. Bathed in that light, we pray that all may share in the goodness that the Lord brings. For the church, that we may reflect the light of Christ in the words we preach and the actions we take, so that the light may shine forth to all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For real leaders, that they may acknowledge the equality, the equal dignity of all people, no matter their place in society, and then work to tirelessly for justice for all, so that all nations may be shining lights to everyone to appreciate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For peace on earth and the promise of the Prince of Peace may be realized in the attitudes and our behavior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those fleeing their home countries because of danger, hardships, or fear, that they may be welcomed into a new home and given the opportunity to live a better life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For this faith community, that strangers may find the Lord in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Continue to pray for all those children who have been aborted who have to die during moments of their lives. We repent for anyone who has taken any part of the abortion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Let the dead, especially our departed sister Martina Herrera, that they all may be with their Savior in paradise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We can have our own intention and silent intention. We pray for all of them and behold in the signs of our hearts. And for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. God of all creation, once again, you brought light to the world. May that light radiate to all those in need through your Son, who now and forever brings light to all of us. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
we will we invite our children present to come with their offerings. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which we offer now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but He who who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, he made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. 
and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord so that converted at last to you we might love one another through your son whom for our sake was handed over to death and now celebrating the reconciliation christ has brought us we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your son whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that stretches us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord.
through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Have Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the land. Lord, I come now to be the Egyptian and to honor you, for I want to say the word of God, so shall be.
song is Christ Be Our Light, found on page 269 in this list, Christ Be Our Light.
Please stand. Prayer for vocations. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the Savior of the world. Please manifest in your church the spirit whom you also abundantly bestowed on your apostles. Call many to priest and religious life within our community. May seal for your glory and for the salvation of the world. Inflame those you have chosen. May they be saints in your likeness. May your Holy Spirit strengthen them. May they be priests and religious according to your own heart. Amen. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. And for every blessing we respond, Amen. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to, to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Are the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, glorifying Him for the lives we live. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is Heart the Herald and Angels Sing, found on page 254 of your misplaced. Heart the Herald and Angels Sing.
Oh, 